This is my passion. This is Ike's Outdoors. Hey guys, Ike here from Ike'sOutdoors.com. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about buying and selling bows. Um, I'm putting this out now because this is the time of year when all the new model bows are coming out and a lot of guys are doing trading, selling their bows, buying new bows. And this is really directed toward a lot of you guys that have never, never had to buy and sell new bows. Um, or buy and sell used bows even before so a lot of you guys that have done this before like me know how kind of how things work um, first thing I want to talk to you about guys about is selling your bow because this is the biggest misconception of bow hunters and, and I ran into it a lot working in a shop um, bows do not hold their value you know technology changes in bows every year every year the, the, the flagship bow from a company changes and bows get older and the technology goes out of date it's not like buying a rifle you know if I go out and buy a rifle for two hundred and fifty dollars or five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars most likely the next year that rifle is probably still going to be worth about the same thing that I paid for if not more it's not that way with bows it just never has been with bows um, there is the exception on that when it comes to recurves some of the more high-end recurves I've noticed they will hold their values the Black Widows uh, and some of those like that, the high-end stuff, um, does hold their value. So if, you, if you're a traditional guy and you got a recurve, uh, some of the high-end recurves, they seem to hold their value pretty well. Low-end stuff that isn't going to hold its value. But I don't care if you go out and buy a $1,000 bow, a flagship bow, or a $500 bow. Come the next year, when you go to sell that bow to buy yourself a new flagship bow, you, you can't expect to get $1,000 out of that bow if, if that's what you paid for it. Most likely, selling to an individual, you're going to drop down about 30%. So, a $1,000 bow, you're going to drop down to about $700. If you're lucky, you can get about $700 bucks for it. Um, if you go into a dealer, now you've got to consider going to a dealer. They're not buying at retail, they're buying at wholesale. So, a dealer is not going to give you what you can get from an individual. Uh, and a lot of people get really mad about this. And I try to explain things to them when they come into the shop. You know, that, hey, I've got to make some money off of this bow, too. I can't give you what it's worth and then turn around and sell it for what it's worth. You know, I won't make a dime doing it that way. So if you go to a dealership and trade in your bow for the next model year, you know, uh, bow or a different one, you can expect to get about 50% of what it's worth. So if it's an older bow, you know, like say this one here. This is a prime example of what I would normally see at the shop. This is an old Buckmaster um, Jennings, whatever this thing is, uh, that I see a ton of these in in the shop. And this bow in in good shape, you know, was I could put it on the shelf and I could sell it for 125 bucks, you know, um, if everything's in really good shape on it and things like that. And I got to go through it with a fine tooth comb, make sure the limbs ain't gonna blow up, make sure the strings are are in good shape and everything like that. So say you bring a bow like this into a shop and it's in pristine condition. Everything on it is, is really nice and looks really great and it can just literally go on the shelf. Uh, this bow may be worth $150, but I can't give you $150 for it because I'm going to put it up here and sell it for $150. So I'm going to offer you about 75% or 50% of what it's worth. I'm going to try to sell it or try to buy it from you or give you a trading value on it of about 50 bucks or about 75 bucks. I'm sorry, that would be about half. Um, and the reason I do that is because I can put it up for 70, I can buy it for 75 bucks, I can put it on a shelf for 150, and then most people that come into a shop are going to try to talk me down on it. So if I sell it for 125 or even 100, at least I've made a little bit of money. And most of the time, bows like this, I, I will not sell for the mark, the price that I've got on them. I'll put them at 150, and when someone comes in and asks me about this bow, the first thing I'll do is lower the price to get it to sell. And so more times than not, I sell this bow for about 100, 
110, 125 bucks. So I've even gone down even as low as like a hundred dollars on a bow like this or less. You know, depending on the person that I'm selling it to and what else they're buying. So when you go trade your bow in to a dealer, do not expect to get what it's worth. You gotta take into consideration that they've got to sell it for retail. They've got to sell it for what it's worth. So uh, taking it to a shop is not always the best option. Like I said, even if it's a brand new bow, straight out of the just been you know last year's flagship bow, you, you're still only going to get about 50% of it. I don't care what kind of bow it is. I've got to turn it around and I've got to make a little bit of money on it and uh, I've got to buy it at the right price to be able to do that. So selling to an individual, you're going to be able to sell this bow for 125 bucks or 150 bucks or maybe even more. Some individuals, you know, um, will we'll give a little bit more for it. So the key thing is to understand when you go to a shop, they're not trying to rip you off. You know, they're just trying to make money off of off of the bow as well. And I've been to some shops when they've offered me, I go in, they offered me about 25% of what it's worth. So you can go into some shops and they will try to rip you off, but um, you got to think about the retail value of it and, and expect to be able to not, you're not going to get the retail value out of it. Uh, and another thing to consider when you take a bow like this in is like this one uh, this is a, just a bow fishing bow of mine um, needs a new string on it. Cables are probably okay but if I was going to hunt with this bow it'd need new strings on it. So you know strings for a bow like this are about 40 to 50 bucks at dealer's cost for, for a good set of string. At dealer's cost I could probably get them for around 20 to 25 bucks but now I've got Instead of 75 bucks invested in this thing to get this safe enough and and on the shelf where I could sell it, you're looking at me putting another say 25 to 35 dollars in it. So my value of it is going to go down according to how much money I've got to put in it to to get it safe for someone to shoot. I've seen some guys who and his pawn shops are real bad about this. They'll grab this bow, they'll put it on the shelf, and sometimes these bows are not safe to shoot and. Um, I'm not, and most dealers that I know are not going to put a bow like that up on the shelf. So that's what you're going to going to have to consider as well. That you know, if it needs some new strings on it, or if it's got something broken on it, that's going to come out of the total cost. So you could even get as low as say 50 bucks for a bow like this at a shop. Uh, so you got to got to consider that when it comes to uh, when it comes to these bows. So, uh, that, so that's what you can expect when you go to, go to sell it to an individual. You're going to get about 70% out of it. When you sell it to a shop, you're going to get about 50% out of it. Um, now, when it comes to buying a bow, there are a lot of things that you can do. You know, when you go into a bow, say, we'll just start with a used bow. You go in and buy this bow and say, I've got 150 bucks on it. First thing I'm going to do is come down on it. Most dealers that I know, too, on their used bows, they price them high enough that they're going to be able to come down. You know, first thing I'm going to do if you're interested in this bow is I'm going to say, hey, I'll I'll sell it to you for 125 bucks. And one of your biggest bargaining chips when it comes to buying a used bow is buying the accessories that go with it. And I always cut a guy a, a good deal on a bow if he's going to buy the accessories that go with it. So if you buy a bow like that and it's it's got nothing on it, and you say, well, you know, and this I, nine times out of ten I would come around and say. I'll sell that bow to you for a hundred bucks if you buy all the accessories that go with it. So, if you're going to buy all the accessories that go with a bow like this, and you need all the accessories that go with the, with a bow like this, you can actually save some money over the big box stores by going to a mom and pop shop and telling them, "Hey, I want I'm going to buy the bow. I'm going to buy all my accessories. I'm going to buy everything that goes with it. Because if you buy this bow, a set of sights, um, a rest, a release." arrows, quiver, you know, stabilizer, all that stuff, you're looking at spending three to four hundred dollars would be depending on what you're gonna buy. Even if you go cheap and you pay a hundred bucks for this bow, you're still looking at spending probably a hundred dollars for the bow and, and cheaper accessories, cheaper arrows, you're still looking at probably spending two to two twenty five. So not only am I gonna make a little profit off the bow, I'm also gonna make a little profit off of off of the sights and the accessories that go with it. So I'll come down a little bit on the price of this bow from 125 down to 100 if you're going to buy all of my accessories or all the accessories that go with it. So if you're going to go in and buy a used bow or even a new bow, that's one way you can haggle too is to say, hey, I, I want to buy all the accessories from you. I'm going to buy everything from you, you know. And they're nor most likely going to come down on the price of the bow and cut you or cut you a break on some of the you know some of the accessories you know I've, I've done that a lot for guys guys come in and say hey I'm gonna buy everything from you 
uh, what kind of deal will you give me? I'll, you know, if, hey, if you buy everything from me, I'll throw in, you know, six arrows. I'll throw in half a dozen arrows with it. And they're going to be cheap arrows. You know, at my cost, I can buy a half a dozen cheap arrows for 20 25 bucks. So, and then, uh, you know, um, dealer's cost at that price. So, I'm giving $25 with a discount, and I'm, I'm getting making money off of the rest of it. So that's some something you can use as a bargaining chip to, to lower the price on the bow and maybe even some of the accessories is by buying everything together at one time and buying it all from the same guy. So um, that's the best way I, I would recommend to buy a used bow. Some of the things I would avoid on buying a used bow if you don't know what you're talking, what you're looking at, or you're a new guy, is I would avoid flea markets. Or yeah, I would avoid flea markets. Uh, I would avoid Craigslist and I would avoid a um, pawn shop. Avoid those three places until you know what you're looking at and can tell. Because like this this bow here, it looks just fine, but I can pick this bow apart. There's a ton of things about this bow that have trouble with it, you know, that it's going to cause it to be unsafe. And that's the biggest thing uh, with these bows is you may go out and buy this bow as a new archer and it may blow up in your face and as a used bow like this, Say you split this, you blow these limbs up up here. This bow's gone. This bow's trash. You might as well just throw it in a dumpster. Because finding a replacement limbs for this bow is going to be hard. And if you do find them, they're probably going to be high, high enough by the time you buy the strings or buy the limb and the new strings for it, you're probably going to be spending more money on what this bow's even worth. So buy from a pro shop. You know, find out what you need to look for. Get some knowledge when you're going to buy used bows. Buy from a pro shop. Someone you trust and someone who seems like they're going to be honest with you and give you an honest opinion on a bow. My bows, when I worked for in a pro shop, they did not go up on the shelf unless I knew they were safe. If I wouldn't let my wife or my kids shoot that bow, it didn't go up on the shelf because I don't want it blowing up in someone's face and then them coming back on me. One, I don't want them hurt, and two, I don't want a lawsuit. But if, if they get hurt, it's going to ruin your business because they're going to go out and tell everybody that they bought this bow from you and that the limbs on it busted. Bad advertisement for a pro shop travels hundreds of miles. Good feedback on a pro shop travels just a few. So you avoid the bad bad uh, publicity. And the way you do that is by putting only quality bows that are safe up on the shelf. So go to a pro shop you trust and, and buy the bow from them. Um, now on new bows, there's two different prices that a new bow uh, can be. And I can't remember which way they go. Um, one of them is the price that the manufacturer, I think it's MSRP's manufacturer suggested retail price. And that's how much the manufacturer suggests they sell it for. So say the bow is $1,000. Uh, MSRP on this bow is $1,000. Uh, then they have a price called an MAP. And that is the lowest price that I can possibly sell that bow for. So um, what I do, what I would suggest you do is find. Uh, if they don't have the prices on the website, get you a, a the, the 2013 catalog for that bow company or whatever year it is and find it. Most times in there they'll have the price. So find out what the MSRP is, find out what the suggested price is and when you go to your shop, if it's marked at that, you can talk them down. Now they won't have a little lot of wiggle room. I mean there's there's just something, nothing that you can do about it. I mean, as a, as a dealer, if I want to keep my dealership, I cannot sell below that MAP. I cannot do it. As much as I like you, you know, as much as I want to help you out, if I want to keep my, my Bowtech, my Hoyt, my Matthews, my whatever dealership it is, I've got to sell to that MAP. So I, I, you cannot get much wiggle room on the MAP. Same way, but you can also do the same way like you're going to do this. Say you're going to go out and buy a brand new Bowtech that's a $1,000 bow. You know, you go into the shop and say, all right, what's your best price on this bow? And you talk him down to the MAP, which is, say, $9.25. So you've saved yourself $75 bucks right there. Now you tell them, all right, I want to buy all my accessories from you. And most time what I would do on a dealer as a dealer is either throw in a free accessory or I would throw in a good discount on the accessories that you're buying with me. Because you're buying a $1,000 bow. You're buying a $925 bow. Or even down to a $600, $500 bow. You know, that's a major purchase. Uh, 500 bucks out of my pocket is 
man, I, I, I'm hesitant to spend 500 bucks on anything but a bow. Now, you guys have seen my bow collection. You know I'll spend some cash on a bow, but 500 bucks is a lot of money. You know, in thousand dollars for a bow, is it, it, man, you can get two thousand bucks wrapped up in a bow pretty quick. And as a dealer, as a pro shop, they know that, and therefore they're going to sell you their bow at, at MAP, and they're going to give you discounts on your accessories, especially if you're buying higher end accessories. And if you're buying a thousand dollar bow, you're probably going to be buying higher end accessories. So um, they're going to give you discounts on your accessories, and they're going to save you a little bit of money there. Uh, now, if you're buying, say, a mid-range bow, a $500 bow, or something like that, now they're probably not going to going to give you as much of a discount on accessories, um, but they're going to work with you a little bit, and that's the biggest thing. If if I can sell everything to you, and especially if it's a new bow at say even $500, I'm making I'm making 30 to 40 percent profit on everything I sell to you and some guys are even higher than that my markup uh, whenever I was selling in a pro shop was about 40 percent so I'm making 40 percent profit on everything that I sell to you if I mark that profit down say from 40 percent I mark everything down 10 percent it's gonna save you a little bit of cash I mark the bow down to MAP um, and it, you know saves you 75 bucks there or whatever it ends up being uh, I'm still making 30% profit on everything, so that's a pretty good deal for me, especially if I'm selling a new bow, because that's that's uh, you know that's a, a wide range, that's a good uh, profit margin on a new bow. Well, as I say, it's it's a good profit margin. Honest to honest to goodness, guys, on these new bows, when I sell a $500 bow, I'm making about 100 bucks. So uh, if I sell a $1,000 bow. Uh, you know, it's it's 200 bucks, two 225, something like that. So the profit margins on a bow for a dealer are not super high. You know, we're not pocketing 500 bucks of that thousand dollars, but you know, we're still making our 30 to 40 percent on on something like that. So when you go in, you know, do some negotiating. You can only get them so low on the new bows, but you're also going to be able to get them to um, should be able to get them to lower the price on some of the accessories. And the last tip, tip that I'm going to give you guys is um, if you're not like me, if you don't have to have the top of the line bow, you know, that, that I have to have the flagship bow every year. You know, I'm one of them guys that buys the 2012, 2013s are coming out, and I'm already chomping at the bit to get the 2013 bows. And part of that's because of what I do with the website and these videos, but part of that's just because that's what I want, <clears throat> you know, um, <clears throat> and I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. But the best thing to do, if I wasn't doing what I was doing today and doing the website and doing these reviews and things like that, uh, even working in a shop, uh, what I would probably be doing is buying last year's model bows. You can go to a shop, like I said, right now the new models are coming out. You're not going to be able to go to a shop right now and buy a 2012. But give it a couple months, February, March, into the summer of next summer, and just keep an eye on their stock, their 2012 stock. You know, all these new bows are coming out, and the older bows are going to start getting marked down. And these are going to be, nine times out of ten, brand new bows that have never been shot. But you got to make room for the 2013 or the next model year stock. It's just like a car lot, uh, except most pro shops aren't as crooked as car salesmen. But um, you've got to make room for the next year's stock. And I know when I took over the shop, they had, this was in 2011, and they had bows from clear back to 2009 and even a few 2008s. So, and a ton of them. So the first year that I was there, it, every day was just a huge sale. I was selling Ross bows and, and um, Alpine bows and several bows that we were no longer carrying way below cost. I mean, I was selling brand new Cardiac, um, Ross Cardiacs for about 200, 225 bucks. And, um, I was selling uh, Botex. We had a ton of Botex in there that had been left over, and I was just selling them as cheap as I could sell them just to get them out the door because uh, that's money sitting there on the shelf. You know, that 2008 bow in 2011, it's losing money every day. It's losing um, value every day, and if I can turn this big lump of bows that are two years old, three years old, I can sell all of them, then I can buy the new 2013 model bows. So that's something to keep in consideration. Now this shop was in really bad shape, so you're not probably not going to run into that uh, unless you're really lucky. I gave some guys some steals on some bows. But keep an eye on the 2012 bows. Like I said, give it a couple months. 
right after Christmas, uh, February, about tax time. When you get your tax return in, say February, March, April, stuff like that. Start watching these shops that had 2012s and have some left over. They're going to start marking them down. They're going to start trying to get rid of them so they can replace them with the 2013 stock. And you can find some really good deals on them there. Also, guys like me, you know, I get my 2012s. I start getting my 2013s. I'm selling my 2012s to finance my 2013s. Now, my, my bows have been shot. You know, my bows, I take dang good care of my bows, but my bows have all been shot. So you're going to get a, a pretty good price on bows from guys like me. And a good place to check them out um, is Archery Talk. Archery Talk Forum uh, has a classified section, and I sell a lot of my bows on there, and I sell them usually pretty cheap, you know, um, just to get rid of them so I've got the cash to go out and buy new bows. So if you know someone like me who constantly buys a new bow every year, just go up to them and tell them, hey, I have guys do this to me all the time. Um, when you sell that bow, let me know. You know, I want to buy it from you. And I just sold my one of my bows just a couple weeks ago. I didn't really want to sell it, but I had five bows, and a guy came, sent me a message on Facebook and said, hey, do you want to sell that bow? And, you know, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, I'm not really hunting with it anymore. I'm not really using it for anything anymore. And uh, so I went ahead and sold it to him and, and gave him, you know, a fair market price on it. So not only can you check out the... Um, the shops for the, the leftover 2012s, you can find some bow addict like me and um, you can you can buy the bows from, from guys like that, usually pretty cheap because they got to have their fix, you know, I got to have my 2013 and for me to get it, I've got to sell my, my 2012s, so I find that bow that I just got to have, I'm willing to sell that one and make you a pretty good deal on it. So, that's those are my tips for buying new bows, you know, you can always make there's always some wiggle room on some of these guys, and that's really what I, I, I wanted to really express, uh, what to expect when dealing with a shop, because I had so many people mad at me thinking that I was trying to rip them off and not give them enough money for their bow, you know, and, and I really wasn't trying to rip anybody off, but the dealer and most pro shops I know are not going to try to rip you off, but we've got to make profit on those bows. And, you know, the only way we can do that is by buying them low. So the best thing to do is sell to an individual, and I told a lot of guys that came in, you know, um, that if they wanted to sell it outright, even if they wanted to trade it in, the best thing to do is to sell to an individual because you're going to get another 10 to 20 percent out of it uh, versus selling it to a shop. So that's my suggestion for you guys. Those are my tips on buying some new bows. Hope this helps you out. Hope you get a really good deal on one. And uh, please don't flood my email now wanting to buy my bows because it's still going to be a few weeks. But um, Find someone like me and you can buy some good bows from them, from them pretty cheap. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this. Appreciate the feedback on, on all these videos. Um, hit the, please hit the subscribe button above. Uh, like this video. Please share it. And uh, please check us out on Facebook under Ike's Outdoors. You can also check out the website for more videos, more product reviews. And that's ikesoutdoors.com. Appreciate you guys watching.